Hey guys, Rory here, and today I'm going to showing off my PS4. And yeah, I got this in 2014. I got an awesome setup here. Um, we have this game case I got from Paul. Um, shout out to Paul, he gave it to me for Christmas, which is great, because I definitely needed to get a case. Um, I actually think I had like 40 PS4, like physical games, right? Like I only really collect physical games. And um, yeah, I love the setup I, I did here. But um... Yeah, so like I sold like half of them, right? Because I was trying to sell money. I bought like manga and uh, like other stuff. And yeah, so we have the actual PS4 system. And um, so yeah, <laughs> got 2014. And yeah, I think one of my first games I got was Watch Dogs, which I don't have anymore. But that was, that was a pretty fun game. I don't think it's as good as GTA, but obviously like way different game, just kind of like similar themes of like running around the city, like obviously didn't have as good of an, uh, as an online, right? And the, um, it was like, the guns kind of sound like paintballs and stuff, but the hacking w was cool. That was my very first PS4 game, which I don't have anymore. But, um, yeah, we have the PS4 here, and, um, yeah, so I, I love the, the DualShock, right? Um, yeah, one second. There we go. So yeah, I, I, I love the, I love the DualShock. Like, it is awesome. I love, like, the touchpad, right? The analog sticks, the buttons, the, um, the triggers. And, um, yeah, it's just, like, a great, great controller. It's, like, durable. Um, yeah, I have PS3 one here, right? And yeah, they're they're pretty similar, but this one's obviously like way lighter. So I think that's like the only advantage is that you know, this one's lighter. Also, the analog sticks are really really nice. Yeah, DualShock 4. And then every PS4 would come with this, which is like a headset. It might actually broke because I used it so much. But yeah, this is great because you just you basically just plug it in. And yeah, and then you just like put in your ear and it has like a little switch that you can turn mic on and off, right? If you want to be muted or not. And yeah, I use this all the time with my friend Paul. And yeah, so got the PS4 here, right? And there's like a disc tray and you press that to touch like a, yeah, it's like touch, so touch sensitive, touch sensitive. So you just like touch that, it comes out. And we have like this, I think this is, yeah, this, this was from my, from my headset, right? We don't need that because mine's broken. So you have uh, two um, ports here so you can have like charging your controller and whatnot. And then, yeah, it's like shiny and stuff. And, and there's been, yeah, three PS4s. So there's obviously this, which is the first edition, right? And I, I waited because it came out 2013, November of 2013. And, um, yeah, there was like the Slim, which was like 4K, right? And then they came out with another one. Um, yeah, it was like the Pro. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like there was another, like another, another one. But they had like the 4K, but it was like a, a Slim PS4. And then they had the regular PS4 and then the Pro. So yeah, those three. And um, yeah, I'll definitely just be sticking to this one. Um, if you are going to get a new PS4, obviously get the, the Pro. Um, but if you want to save money, then yeah, get the, this version or the, uh, the slim. And then, yeah, I have the actual box here. I don't know how, you, how well you guys can see that, but... Yes, yeah, so we have PS4, right? And then, yeah, it's always exciting when you get a new console. So we have, like, Infamous, right? Um, and, yeah, it was very interesting, like, seeing uh, Xbox and Sony kind of, like, have conferences, right? Because like, I think there was something with the Xbox, right? Where like they weren't allowing you to like borrow games and stuff. And then like Sony had like, um, like at the at E3, they're like they're pretty much just like making fun of them, just like, hey, you can borrow this game. Which is kind of funny. But obviously, like we're all gamers, we're all in this together. Like whatever your preference is, you know, it's all just being the console, and that's just a ton of fun. So let's get into the games. So let's get into Tearaway. So I'm gonna bring this down a little bit. There we go. So we have Tearaway Unfolded, 
and yeah, this was originally on the Vita. And let me just, um, one sec. Okay, I don't have to hold up. Oh, wait, hold on. So there we go, we have Tearaway, and it's a great little stand. So, um, the Vita um, is great with remote play with the, with the PS4. And um, yeah, so you can like connect this to the PS4 and then, and then basically you can play all the PS4 games on the, on the Vita, which is awesome. There's a little bit of input lag, but it's, it's pretty dang good. And yeah, I also have Tearaway on the Vita as well. And this was remastered and it's from the creators of Little Big Planet. And you like, you're a sack, not a sack, you're a, you're a paper sack rather. Um, I have a little sack boy that I got um, with Little Big Planet 3, which I can show off more in a sec. But um, Media, Media, Media Molecule is great because like, they, they make such creative games, right? Like everything in this world is like made out of paper and um, yeah, super imaginative, like you cut things out, you use a touchpad um, to cut, and, like create shapes and stuff and like place things. And um, yeah, it's just great because like the PS4 and the Vita kind of like intertwine and I think they definitely had something going for them, right? But then like Nintendo had the Switch idea, which was like genius. It was like both, you know, be a console and on the go, which is like perfect because I love, I love both, right? So yeah. All right, so that is Tearaway Unfolded, Crafted Edition. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, and put that one back, and then next up we have is, oh, this is a good one. So we have Monster Hunter World. So, uh, let's see, so, Monster Hunter World. Man, this game is awesome. Like, I want to draw, like, the, the character designs. Like, it is so cool. Like, um, I played Monster Hunter originally on the 3DS, and it took me a little bit to get into it. It was fun, but this is awesome. The graphics are amazing. I was online with a friend. Um, it's just, like, really exciting, like, chasing after a monster and, like, trying to figure out, like, what, what they're going to do, right? And, like, I just love the, like, the look of the monster here. And, um... Yeah, like you, you create your own character. You have like these, um, these cats, right? I um, can't, can't remember what they're called, but they're basically little, little kitties, right? Oh yeah, palicos. And um, they're like around, kind of like the base in the camp area, and you're, like talking to people. And they're, they're like really adorable because they can like, they can cook for you, right? And I think, I think you only have one at a time. And um, yeah, so like you can have one fight with you alongside. And I haven't done online yet, but it does look like a lot of fun. Cause like playing on your own, you know, tracing down these giant monsters, like in open world, like that is awesome. And yeah, hopefully we get a, get a Monster Hunter like full on game like this for the Switch. So yeah, Monster Hunter World. All right, so next up we have here is Little Big Planet 3. And yeah, so. I got the plush edition, right? And yeah, it came with some like DLC and stuff. And um, like this little sack boy. And dude, I was so excited for this game because it waited like years. Yeah, yeah, I believe this came out 2014 in December. And um, yeah, I was like a little Ellie, a um, little infamous guy, Nathan Drake, Killzone. Like, Little Clown is awesome because you like play, create, share. And they, they had like new characters, um, Swoop, Odd Sock, Toggle. And they kind of worked together. And um, yeah, I was hoping it was like more going to be like, you need all four, right? Instead of like switching to each one. Because normally, normally you're just playing as each one in a different level specified to them. Like, um, Swoop will just have flying missions, right? It was like swooping. And then Odd Sock, you like you know, transform smaller and bigger. Um, what's his name? Uh, toggle? Or odd, uh, yeah, oh yeah, Odd Sock. Um, yeah, he can like jump off walls and stuff. He's like a dog, basically. And um, yeah, I think Little, Little Big Planet 2 still wins hand down as my as my favorite. Here you go, uh, Mr. Sackway. That's my favorite Little, Little Big Planet, but this one is truly awesome. Um, well, yeah, it has like 
I think like 10 layers or so. And it's great because like with Little Big Planet, um, you can have like endless amounts of levels, like first person. Um, and it's crazy because this is normally a 2D game, right? You can make fully 3D levels. And that gets me super excited for Dreams because you can create fully 3D games. Like, Media, Media Molecule knows what they're doing. Um, this one wasn't made by Media Molecule because um, they were working on Dreams for a while, but awesome stuff nonetheless. So we have Little Big Planet 3, Day 1 Edition. Alright, so next up we have is Ratchet and Clank. And yeah, this was made by Insomniac for making the new Spider Man. And yeah, that game looks dope. Um, I love the little designs of um, Ratchet and Clank, right? And like the graphics are amazing. I did a Let's Play on this a long time ago. And um, yeah, they used the cutscenes because they had a movie based off of this, right? It was like a game based off the movie, based off the game. And normally, like, movie licensed games aren't the best, but this one is awesome. I love, like, the little, um, the niches on his, on his ears, like, the overall design. For Ratchet, right? And, um, yeah, I haven't, like, th this is basically my first, yeah, th this is my first Ratchet and Clank game. I tried getting into another one on the PS3, I was, can't remember, you're, like, building stuff, right? But this one is, like, action, and, like, the graphics are amazing, you're, like, collecting stuff. Oh yeah, you have like tons of guns, right? You have like a sheepinator, which is hilarious. You can like shoot your enemies, turn them into sheep. Um, there's like a disc ball, disco ball that you like throw down, and like they're like the enemies are dancing. It's hilarious, and um, yeah, it's just awesome. And I really hope we get a sequel because this one was so good. I think it was only like 40 bucks too. It's like still the price. Like the graphics, were amazing. The voice acting was awesome. And the, the gameplay was too. Oh yeah, the game based on the movie, based on the game. <laughs> Ratchet and Clank. The PS4, awesome stuff. Okay, so next up we have here is Borderlands, the handsome collection. And yeah, the Borderlands games are such awesome games. Like, I love the cel shaded graphics, it really pops. Like. That style is just consistent throughout, like, um, uh, like, those are games from a long time ago, like, Gravity Rush, which we'll get to. When you, like, have cell shaded, it just has, like, a style to it, like, unique lines and, like, character designs are awesome. Um, yeah, I cannot wait for Borderlands 3, and, yeah, I know, I know they're currently working on that, they did Battleborn, and that kind of failed, right, because it's, like, going head-to-head -head with Overwatch, but even though, like, way different games, like, Battleborn had tons of content, I played they made it with my friend Paul, right? And um, yeah, so this comes with the, the pre-sequel in Borderlands 2. And yeah, the pre-sequel was like a ton of fun. I think maybe some people have, might have dismissed it, you know, obviously since it's not a main entry. But um, yeah, it's awesome because you're like on the moon, you can like slam down, like slam, I, think, I can't remember what it was, like a butt slam, you can like butt slam enemies, right? Just like, and And um, yeah, it was awesome. Like you had like like a laser gun and like it was just a ton of fun. Like and everyone had like Australian accents because I think the developers were from um, Australia, right? Because uh, it wasn't made by the normal team at Gearbox. It was made by I think like someone else. So, um, but yeah, I really hope that uh, we, we get like a remaster of Borderlands One because that totally should have came with us. And um, I haven't actually played that one, so. Yeah, hopefully they have a remastered Borderlands 1 and we get Borderlands 3 soon because, like, dude, this game is awesome. Like, the looting, the shooting, um, yeah, it's just, like, so much fun with friends. Like, I just love all the guns, creating, like, different character types, right? You can, like, customize them. And, you know, hopefully we'll have more customi customizability in the next one. And, like, obviously guns are amazing. Like, I love the music, the world. Like, it's just so much fun. Like, I think... When I originally played this, I had them on the PS3 first, and then I sold them and got a handsome collection. Um, yeah, so I didn't really have anyone to play with, but the games were so much fun. And I had like all the DLC that like it was just a blast. Like it's awesome with the DLC because it's just tons of content, tons of guys to shoot. I just absolutely love Borderlands, and but yeah, I have it. I have it on the Vita as well. And 
Yeah, not nearly as good, but I know we're gonna get it for the Switch. It's gonna be awesome, and I cannot wait. So yeah, that is Borderlands, a handsome collection for the PS4. All right, so next up we have here is uh, Infamous Second Son. And yeah, this is one of the very first games I got for the PS4. So yeah, um, this was voiced by Troy Baker, and um, I can like just tell by his, by his face. I mean, like you had such cool powers, and you had like an interesting dynamic with your brother. He was like a sheriff, right? And um, you know, in this you can choose good or bad. And the the control light, oh yeah. So this thing, which wasn't on the DualShock 3, um, would go more dark red or more dark blue. And mine went all the way blue because I was like always rescuing people. But the graphics were like amazing. Like the power was really cool. You had like a neon power. You could like run up buildings. Um, like he had a fire power with the, with, with the chains, right? He like just whip the uh, the bad guys like, here and back, and um, yeah, I just love like the, the design to uh, Delson. And um, yeah, the other famous games with uh, the coal are fantastic. Oh yeah, and the um, the DLC uh, First Light with uh, what was. I think it was Ashley Johnson, it was another one, not another voice actress. Um, but she was like amazing. Oh yeah, she plays Nadine in Uncharted. I can't remember her name. But um yeah, she's amazing and like that DLC is a ton of fun. You're in uh, you're in you're in Seattle in this game, right? And um yeah, it's just like a blast. Like you you like you have all these powers, you're beating up guys, you go super fast. Like you get wings towards the end of the game, like you have like guardian hero powers. Um, like the graphics are amazing, and oh well, yeah, and uh, the, the developers are working on like a samurai game, which is awesome, like an open world samurai game. That is dope. So yeah, Sucker Bunch is like an awesome developer. Cannot wait for that, and hopefully we'll get more Infamous games in the future. So yeah, Infamous Second Son for the PS4. Awesome stuff. All right, so next up is Batman Arkham Knight. And um, yeah, dude, this game, so much fun. I wouldn't say it's the best one. It definitely has like the best graphics, super fun gameplay. Um, like you're like going in the Batmobile, majority of the games, like figuring out puzzles and stuff. And there's like a ridiculous amount of like, um, yeah, question marks that you gotta go after with the Riddler, which I know people had kind of a problem with. There's like tons and tons, like they filled this game up. Right, because it's the last Batman Arkham game, right? And uh, yeah, like the first, um, they had like Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, right? And then they had another one set in between or before um, called Batman Arkham Origins, made by a different developer, which is still really fun. And then they came back, made Batman Arkham Knight. And uh, yeah, I absolutely love the dynamic between the Joker and the Batman. Like Mark Hamill and uh, I think it's Kevin Conroy. Um, Dude, the, the voice actors are so good. Like, there's just such crazy parts in this. Like, you have like the Scarecrow, um, and like the Joker, and like Valentine's like hallucinating, like he's in the town, like all this crazy stuff is happening. Like, the themes and the gameplay in this, um, it's like so awesome. Like, you're just beating up guys, like gliding over the city. Like, they really nailed Batman, definitely. And uh, Rockstar, or not Rockstar, Rocksteady definitely deserves to have their name on that cover. And yeah, I cannot wait next game from them. Yeah, we have Batman Arkham Knight. Dude, this game is insane. Okay, so next up we have is... Oh crap, so we have Metal Gear Solid, the Phantom Pain. So yeah, this, I think this was my game of the year when it came out. Definitely. Like, definitely like, literally like the best gameplay uh, I've ever played. Like, it's so smooth, it's like 60 FPS, which really works with this, because it's like, you're, you're a snake, right? And there's enemies, and you have like, um, a horse that you're on, and you can like hide on the side of it, and um, so like, say there's an enemy, right? You can get on the other side of your horse, go past them. And you had like a canine with you, and you could have them like go after enemies. You could like get a binoculars and mark them, right? And um, like I just 
Snake looks awesome on this. There was, um, yeah, there's a demo. It was like 30 minutes, maybe an hour. And people, people played like maybe like 30 or 40 bucks, which is ridic ridiculous. Which was like ridiculous expensive, right? But like, oh my goodness. Like, um, yeah, it was like such an improvement from that. And um, Peace Walker is like my absolute favorite. Um, PSP game, and this is one of my all-time favorite Metal Gear games. Like the music, the action. Like I just love like going in stealth and taking guys out, and, like surveying the area. And um, yeah, Metal Gear is just an awesome game. And yeah, I uh, hope the best for Kojima. Like it's a new game. Looks very interesting. It's, um, it's kind of interesting because like with the trailers, he never really gives anything away. You're always asking more questions, right? And he just keeps drawing you in with his string and then bam he's got you metal gear bam this next game bam the next game like the guy is obviously clearly a genius and yeah clearly everyone else working for him so yeah we have metal gear solid 5 the phantom pain oh yeah and um i love how like um from like peace walker to this um so you didn't have you didn't have a a mother base right in peace walker but you never actually went there, but in this you do. And you have like rations and people, and um, you can like tackle guys and stuff and beat them up, but they don't even care. They're like, yes boss, yes boss. <laughs> it's like really funny, you can like drive around a car, they have like different vehicles, like this game is phenomenal, and I would definitely recommend playing it. So next up we have here is Grand Theft Auto 5, and oh my gosh, so many memories of this game. So I got this um, 2014, um, the same year that I got my PS4. But yeah, this, this was my game of the year that I got it, and uh, yeah, no wonder it's like GTA. You play as three different characters, right? So you got like all of them right there. Um, yeah, so like. Um, it was kind of annoying with like, the loading screens, like, they take a while, but the online, like the world, like GTA is awesome, like it's so much fun, like going around, like um, going to like shops, right, and just like holding people up, doing like the heist, right, um, I believe it, like it took them a couple weeks because they're having like, online issues, but then after that, they, have, like, they, have, they haven't like stopped supporting it since, and yeah, there's like so many vehicles you can have, like, like a... Uh, helicopters, right? You have like dirt bikes, cars, right? Skis, you can see like all on the cover right there. And like the world is like so realistic. I remember um, I let my mom try it, right? And it was funny, she was like, she'd either follow the rules or like not even know what she was doing. Like she'd like, be, she'd, like I'd, I'd have her like be in a car, right? And um, so like she'd drive up and um, so she, she'd actually be like following all the traffic lights, which is hilarious. And then the other way, she'd like literally just hold down R2 and just be like ramming into all the people and just have like no control and it's like hilarious. But um, I love how like you can like customize your character in GTA Online. You can like get like makeup, tattoos and stuff and like customize your car. And um, yeah, it's just a ton of fun. Like me and my best friend Paul would like mess around in there in the stores and people would like just cause havoc, right? And we just like mess around like doing missions, you know, going into the Navy base. Or trying to steal like a tank and usually you die like the majority of the time and um, yeah I just absolutely love GTA it is a phenomenal series and I cannot wait for Red Dead 2 yeah awesome stuff oh yeah and like the um, the heists were insane like insanely hard right and you had to have like a team of people and um, like oh man there's just like so much to talk about, I don't even know what to say, like you can be underwater, in the air, like GTA is just an awesome series, and this was the first one that got me into it, so yeah, great start. But yeah, and this one was like sold like tons, like, like just as big as, or even bigger than Minecraft, right, so it is an insanely awesome series. Next up we have here is of Fallout 4. And uh, Fallout 4 wants to fall over. <laughs> so yeah, uh, let me think. 
Yeah, so you had, this, this was in first person, and it was made by Bethesda. And, um, yeah, it was just like a truly awesome game. Um, yeah, it was like first person, and, um, yeah, it was like a ton of action. You, you, oh yeah, you, you like, you build stuff, um, and there was like different dialogue, right? You could like choose different ones and have different outputs, right? So you could like choose how you wanted to play. Um, yeah, it was just like a really fun game. There was like, a lot of hype over it, right? Um, they have like Fallout in uh, VR, which is like, which is awesome. And um, yeah, it has like a really interesting plot, how like you go to sleep, and it's like, I don't, I don't know how long, hundred years later, and you wake up and there's like, just a wasteland out there, right? And just like bandits and people and stuff. So it's kind of like Borderlands, but it's like, it's its own thing, right? Like it's a completely open world. Um, yeah, I just love the style of it. You know, like originally started out in the 1950s. You like create your own character. Like you have your family with you and stuff. And um, yeah, Fallout 4 is just a ton of fun. And yeah, I cannot wait till Fallout 5. So next up we have is Bloodborne. Oh crap. Oh man, so I never played a Dark Souls game, right? So I never played a Dark Souls game, right? Um, so this was my very first Souls game. And man, is it brutal. <laughs> man, so it's kind of funny. So, like I said, I never played a Souls game. So basically, um, yeah, like I, you start out, you don't have any weapons. And like, so you're like, there's this wolf you encounter. I went up to it and I, I kept trying to fight it and I tried to avoid it, go past it, try to go through the doors and the doors wouldn't open. So you had to kill this one enemy and I don't think the game explained how to like equip your weapons because it had like different controls. It was like a different developer, right? In a different country. So like, um, I was literally trying to fight that wolf, the first enemy for literally hours. I like punch him, roll, punch him, roll and I almost got him. Like, so many times I kept dying over and over and over again, right? Just immediately, I was like, okay, I, I know people say, say these games are hard, but, you know, this is a little bit ridiculous. So I like, looked it up, literally took like five seconds, figured out how to equip a weapon, beat him in like three hits. It was like, oh my goodness. So yeah, that was my, my first experience as, as a Souls game, as in Bloodborne. But like, I loved like the vintage setting. Like the moon, like the like the wolf designs, like it is um, so. Oh yeah, big, not Vengeance, uh, big Victorian stuff. So that's what I mean to say. Um, the creature designs, like the bosses, um, it's all so cool. Like there's like real leather, right? And the ragdoll effects are like hilarious. Like the enemies like trailing on you and stuff. And um, yeah, the weapons are cool because you can have like a, a like a saw, right? And it'll like it'll get larger and you can, like swing it around. And like take enemies out and you have a gun that'll like shoot and lock on the enemies and you can like roll around and stuff. And um yeah, Bloodborne, like the music is awesome. There isn't like much talking because basically the characters is the world. That's why when you see it, you're looking into the world and you just walk around and kind of you know exist in it. And um yeah, I cannot wait for Bloodborne 2 and hopefully. Yeah, I cannot wait for a Bloodborne 2. Hopefully we get that in the near future. And um, yeah, this game is awesome and I definitely should play it more. So yeah, we have Bloodborne for the PS4. All right, so we have Dark Souls 3. And um, so yeah, obviously this came out after Bloodborne and um, yeah, Bloodborne had an interesting thing. So say for example, you hit an enemy and you block or something, you'll be able to like regen health. This doesn't have that. So you have to be more wary of your health. It was awesome. It was like this knight. And it's, it's, it's made by the same developer. And um, yeah, I just love like the intro to it. It's so cool. Um, it was like dragons and stuff. Um, but yeah, and, they, and then they just recently announced that they're um, remastering first one we're gonna have to switch in PS4 and um, yeah so this, this is my very first Dark Souls game I never played two or one my first entry was obviously Bloodborne as I said but yeah you, you have like online in this oh yeah and like the um the missions were like so much fun like the bosses um yeah I made some like really fun videos on them and stuff 
it was like this giant tree boss and like he was like had like all these like sprouting eggs and like you like knock them down and stuff and like the enemy designs yeah they just like fall through the series like the world is truly amazing like you, you learn so much just by just walking around without the world without even saying anything at all and like the enemies will like keep chasing you and stuff like so, like you you, you got to be ready for dark souls but they are a ton of fun games I cannot wait to see what the next Souls game is. So yeah, Dark Souls 3. Alright, so next up we have here is... We have two games, so... We have The Evil's In, right? And then we have The Evil's End 2. So yeah, this Evil Within 2 just came out um, October, and um, yeah, I haven't dived into it yet, but I really want to because I hear it's like so much better than the first. And um, yeah, like you, you play as this guy, like this thing, this cop or de detective, right? And you go in this hospital, and everyone's dead, like everyone's gone, and the world like cracks open with all this crazy stuff. It's, like it's insane, and um, you end up like in this. It's like basically like the end of the world, like everyone's like dead, there's like zombies walking around, you're like trying to figure out what is going on. I think you have like a partner you're trying to rescue. And um, yeah, you play as Sebastian, and it's very, very cool because you guys have played Resident Evil, right? It's very similar, but um, they have like black bars, at least in the first one. So like your peripheral vision is kind of off, you have like a movie effect. And um, yeah, there, there is some like frame rate issues, so like. The game is like a little bit challenging, so you have to like work through that, right? And um, yeah, just really take your time taking down enemies. And uh, yeah, you can like light them on a fire and stuff, and like they'll chase you. And uh, yeah, it's just like an, an insane, awesome game. Like I love horror games. I don't have too many of them, but the ones that I do, like I really love them. Oh yeah, I remember I got so far, so. It doesn't seem like that much now, and I, I think I went back and played, and I like, got through sections super easily because, like, when you when you go through this game, you go through like every crevice, like you'll die like every corner, every enemy, so you'll know like the whole location. So like when I went back, like I, I beat it way quicker. I'm sure I could beat it like twice as fast now. And um, so yeah, I played it. and I got like 13 hours in, right? Which doesn't seem like much, but for this, where you're constantly dying, being in the same location, right? Um, yeah, so I was like, I was near the end of the game, and then my PS4 had like some weird error where I had to like reinstall everything. So, like, I never beat the original Evil Within, even though I was like super far into it and like super challenging games. But yeah, definitely getting to jump into Evil Within 2. Um, I don't know, I might wait till Halloween, honestly. I love like having um, a Halloween game to play, like with my friend Paul. Um, and I'm, I'm usually the one that's playing, right? Like, I had a friend's house. And I wish it was just fine. <laughs> it's fun for me too. Fun for them. Um, so yeah, The Evil Within and Evil Within 2 for PS4. Alright, so next up we have is the Tomb Raider game. So, first one we got is Tomb Raider Definitive Edition. And yeah, if you guys saw the PS3 video, I talked about this. And I got the Collector's Edition for it. And then... Yeah, I decided to get it on the PS4 as well because you get like extra bonus stuff. And um, yeah, actually the movie just came out. I think this weekend, like people are, um, are like surprising, like saying it's good and stuff, which is awesome. Because usually like video game based movies aren't that great, right? Like I think Wreck the Wreck It Ralph is probably like the best video game movie. It's not even like based off an actual one. It's kind of its own thing. Yeah, anyways, um, yeah, Tomb Raider is awesome. Like, Laura Croft is such a strong, like, character, right? Like, she gets strapped on this island. Like, she's searching for adventure, right? And she, like, takes all her friends, convinces all these people. And then, like, this um, storm hits in, right? And she gets separated. So it's just her. Just her in the world. And, um, like, the enemies are absolutely insane in, in Tomb Raider. Um... Yeah, like there's so many insane moments, like literally, literally the beginning of the game, like you fall on the spike, and you have to like climb out of this rock, all this like crazy guys chasing you, it gets like smushed, and um, yeah, like 
lot of people like you know compare this to Uncharted, which makes sense. But I think this, this definitely has more survival action to it, right? Because Laura's like she's really fighting for her life, right? Like Nathan Drake shooting guys, but you know he's definitely gonna make it through, and he has insane scenarios too. So I guess yeah, both for sure. But um, yeah, absolutely love Uncharted, Tomb Raider, great games. They kind of like build off each other, and um, yeah, I really like the character of Jonah and Roth in the first Tomb Raider, and like the, um, the whole map to it, like the island, super awesome. It's kind of like it's not fully open world, but it's um, semi-open world, which is, which is fine enough for me because like the graphics are amazing, the gameplay is too. You have like a bow and arrow, right? And you can like change it to like be flames, like light enemies on fire and like play it stealthy or not and like go guns blazing. And like the locations and like the, like this, the, the whole design of the world, like the shanty town, with all the, like the rust and people is like so awesome. And um, yeah, absolutely love original Tomb Raider. And um, yeah, I have to say, um, yeah, I really like um, Messiah. But you never saw them, so I, I, I think honestly the second one I have better villains. So moving on to Rise of the Tomb Raider, I have the 20 year celebration. So yeah, this was kind of interesting because um, it came out originally on Xbox, right? The Xbox One. And um, it was a launch exclusive for a year. And then we got this. And I was hoping we'd get a collector's edition because I wanted like, a new figure, but this was still cool nonetheless. So sorry about that so so yeah we have like a really cool eye silhouette of Laura right and it's like rise of the Tomb Raider so I was like her finding herself and then her like you know improving on herself and yeah you have like such a cool like hatchet and she has like a cool bow and arrow um, so yeah this is the 20 year celebration and yeah oh gosh like the puzzle in this has like co-op um, DLC yeah, I mean, this definitely definitely tops the first one, but I don't know. I think I like the story maybe more. I don't know. I really like the first one, so it's hard to say, but both amazing games. And, um, yeah, I cannot wait to see the movie this Sunday. Well, at least for me now. Um, and, yeah, I'm definitely going to do, like, a review on it with my friend. And, um, yeah, let's see. Well, let's look inside here, because this has art. We have the um, Laura Croft 20 Years of an Icon. Right, so we open up. Oh, we got like a dope shot of Laura. Um, we got Crystal Dynamics, which they make awesome games. Oh, yeah, um, the first Tomb Raider had online. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Laura's like, What's going on in there? Um, so the um, yeah, the first one had online, and then they kind of like um, they, they stopped doing it. Man, I love this like all the different styles, all the different people, all the different kinds of Laura. She's like fighting a monster. And, oh, it's sick. Yeah, like, I love seeing different art styles. It's, like, unique, right? Like, you draw for you. Oh, it's awesome. Miss Croft. I love the look of her face on that. Um, Desert Ruins. That is awesome. Yeah, the, the locations were way better than this. Like, you had, like, Siberia. Siberia. The desert. Oh, that's sick. Rebirth. Uh, one with nature. Oh my gosh, I love this. Um, yeah, we got Legend. That is sick. I love the look of her, like, her lines in her face. Um, and, like Laura's Mansion. Or uh, whatever it's called. Um, Walk a line by Egyptian. Dude, this is sick. Yeah, I love like how many different ways you can draw one character, right? Oh yeah, there was the uh, Temple of Osiris games. That is amazing. Um, oh yeah, the cliffhangers. Yeah, they're like crazy... Sequences like with the with the plane, right? And oh man, the the when you die it was so brutal. Like, you were actually scared to die in these games. Oh yeah, we have like a bunch of Lauras, right? We have like the 2013 one, so like it's like Laura through the years. And um, yeah, the 2013 game was my very first Tomb Raider game, and I definitely should go back play the others. And then we have the game disc, and yeah, definitely an awesome series. And um, yeah, I cannot wait for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which just got announced coming September 14th. So that is awesome. Here we have Tomb Raider, Definitive Edition, and Rise of the Tomb Raider, 20 year celebration. I cannot wait for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. All right, 
next up we have literally my all-time favorite game. So we have The Last of Us. 